Hey Taurus, this is a very good time of the year for you when it comes to relationships. And that is because Venus, the planet of love, and of course your ruler and abundance is in a position for you where it wants harmony, it wants peace, it wants closeness, and it allows you right up to the end of the month to express all of your feelings and other people to be more open with you about their feelings and you're able to find compromise, which is actually one of the keys to a good relationship, being able to express what you feel and you want love to reign all throughout December. Anyway, that starts from the 4th. Just before that, Mercury enters Capricorn and you've got 13 days, maybe 12 days, to really express yourself freely before you turn into a bit of a truth monster because Mercury is going into your position where you are adventurous, you are bold, and you're saying things that are on your mind, but you do have to be a little bit cautious. You're also determined to start a new life for yourself in some way. You want to have people around you that support you. It's very important to you. And if you feel that you meet people, particularly around the 2nd of December, that that support you or that you can work with, you're ready to explore and do things differently because you feel that you have that backup. And actually, it's an important theme for you over the next couple of years, actually, that you have people around you that you trust, that you form great collaborations, and that you connect with people on a deeper level. It's the opposite of being a hermit for the next couple of years, because Saturn is saying to you, come on now, number one, believe in your future, believe that you are lovable, that abundance can come your way, believe that you fit in, in a way. You have to fit in with everyone, obviously, but you fit into the to certain groups of people that resonate at the same vibration as you. And there's a lot of positive coming around that. In fact, if you get out and about around the 5th of December when Venus is trying Saturn, you may bump into one person or a number of people that make you feel very at home. And it feels like an instant connection. And it feels like something that's going to be long lasting. With um, Mercury trying Jupiter on the 8th, with Jupiter still in your sign, you have the opportunity again to explore, to get out there in the world, to express yourself. You might also think about studying or traveling, but it's sort of coming up in your mind more and more, and you're going to feel that you want to do something solid to make it happen. With Venus opposing Jupiter on the 10th, that is a great day for relationships and new beginnings, and almost like you'll feel that life is becoming a bit more abundant and a bit more harmonious for you, and you're open to that. The new moon in Sagittarius might bring up some very intense primal emotions. Um, it's You're going to be thinking about life, death, rebirth, sex, obsession, money and power. Now, how you are in all those areas with a full moon, it brings things up. What are you feeling about how powerful you are in the world? How are you when it comes to your emotions? Can you get carried away by jealousy or obsession? This full moon is not only going to highlight some of that, but it's hopefully going to give you an arrow of, of answers for how to balance that and how to feel more comfortable, how to come into your power and not be overruled by primal emotions. Now, Mercury is going retrograde. This is what makes you a bit of a truth monster. So be cautious from the 13th because you are just saying it as it is. Now, on the other hand, you're also free to speak your truth and, and you'll be very optimistic. You'll be very encouraging to other people, etc., etc. Now, retrograde Mercury is trying Jupiter. So even though Mercury's retrograde on the 18th, you might hear from someone significant in your past. They may pop up. Could even be someone that lives overseas but there's a reconnection of some sort. And with Venus opposing Uranus, and Uranus is also in your sign, expect the unexpected when it comes to your love life, when it comes to one-to-one -to -one partnerships. And really, and you don't like thinking on your feet because you like to think about things, you like to make decisions over a long period of time, but you may have to come up with a quick decision around the 21st of December Make it a good one. Come from your heart. Don't come from a place of fear. 
Now, Mercury re-enters Sagittarius on the 23rd and it makes you think about the meaning of life and where you are. And you're going into quite a, a deep thinking phase where you want to be powerful, you want to be deep, you want to do something significant in the world, but be careful that you don't get vengeful because that is the shadow side of that. Now, the full moon in Cancer on the 27th is brimming with ideas for you. You're thinking things, you're having intense conversations, but look out for a specific conversation that's really, really important. Now, Jupiter has been going retrograde, has been going backwards. When Jupiter goes direct on the 31st, make the most of it because there's expansion and you are opening up to new experiences. And also, you're much more optimistic. For instance, on the 27th, the sun is trying Jupiter. You're feeling bold and you're feeling like you want to make changes and you're doing it from deep within your being. So it's not superficial change, it's significant. Take care, gorgeous, and I'll speak to you soon. So here is the deck. I love the box. It's got some of the tarot heroes on the front that are in my deck, which I'll tell you about later. It is flipped up. How fabulous is that? I love that. And then you have the little booklet here. Little nuggets of information about each card. Here they are. Notice the gold. The fool. The magician. The High Priestess, which is so important because it is Pamela Coleman Smith. She was the illustrator of the original Rider Waite. And I have three lovers cards. The Chariot, Strength, the Hermit, various heroes here. This is Anime Wong. So I've got this leaflet that comes with a pack. It gives you one line of straight to the point wisdom about it. But this is the book. And I'm so pleased with it because what I aim to do with this deck is to inspire your own psychic ability, but also to empower you and uplift you every day with the message of the card. Let's take a look inside. In it, we've got the meanings and readings. All my knowledge is in this book, all my love and all my heart. I talk to you about my journey and I talk to you most importantly about how to dive in and learn the tarot really quickly because that's the way I roll. Very easy guide. I talk to you about reversals and how to empower yourself and feel the love of the tarot. And then there's a little space where you can do your readings. And at the back, really importantly, I talked to you about all the card characters, the amazing things they did in the world to inspire us. Just to give you a taster, let's pull a card to see what we've got. Oh, that is a great card. The Nine of Cups, the Wish card. The most basic interpretation of the Nine of Cups is that you're being given a massive cosmic yes. This book is my life's work. I've been doing tarot basically from when I was born. It's been a lifelong passion and you could, you're always learning when it comes to tarot and I've tried to put everything I know and and all the magic and how you can learn quickly. You can get them from Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and potentially order them from your local bookshop and support your local bookshop. These carry my heart and my soul, and I thank you for being on this journey. You inspired me to do it, because I wanted to have a inclusive deck. So I thank you for being my inspiration.